Marty, can you expand a bit about your idea about empathy and um, it's your view of it through an ecological perspective? Certainly. Well, one of the reasons that empathy and care are, tend to be devalued in philosophical discourse is that they'll say, well, some people care, some people don't, it's not reliable, you know, it's not like rationality and reason that you, know, you can say this is true for all time and all places. And one of the problems is, first of all, that overemphasizes the ability of reason to influence people. Um, people can know, hear all the arguments for why you should be a vegetarian, but there are other reasons that they don't listen to those arguments. So the way I look at empathy and care is that, yes, it's true, you can't force somebody to care. care. I can't say you must care for animals and if you do, you won't eat meat. But what you can do is figure out what is it that will nurture empathy and care? It's very much an ecological model, so what are the seeds that you can plant that will help to grow it? And as you know, in any kind of ecological endeavor, that you, you need to, when you're planting something, you need to understand what's the soil like, uh, what kind of fertilizer do you need for that? For things to grow properly. So we have a mental and emotional soil that we need to nourish. And one of the ways we do that is if there are toxic things in our soil, we need to remove them. And I think we have toxic worldviews that we need to you know, just shed. We need to get them away before we can access our empathy. So there, you know, we need to look at our religious traditions that, you know, have been interpreted to say that we have dominion, we, should, we can do whatever we want. Uh, we need to look at some of our philosophies and religions that say that humans are the only species that are sacred. Um, there's, there's so many ways in which we're taught that other living beings are simply there for our use. And, when we're walking around with those worldviews, it's very hard to access those feelings of empathy. And I think as a culture, we, we don't you know, make empathy and care a major factor in our lives. Uh, I think we need to start with young children at a very young age, teaching them how to have these feelings or how to trust those feelings of empathy and, and honor them. They seem to be quite devalued in our culture Completely today. Completely devalued. You know, I think we just the opposite. Um, you know, we teach young kids to you know that it's amusing to go to zoos and look at animals behind bars, or they have their little science project in their classes, and some kids are dissecting animals. and And what I say is the major lesson in that is is the shutting down of empathy that it's saying that these are living beings that you can use as tools for research. And I think that we, we also, along similar lines, we devalue the ability of stories to influence people. And I think that, you know, we're, you know some, some of us in the animal rights movement have often been working on our rational arguments for why you should do this, that, or the other, but we forget that stories can have a much bigger influence. If you look at a, a movie like Babe, I think it influenced a lot more kids to become vegetarian than you know, all the other rational arguments. Um, so I think that stories, the value of stories is that it brings to light the individual identity of these, these beings. It, it brings us into their worldview and helps move beyond this idea of animals as this mass construct or as a species. They're, they're individual beings with their own interests, desires, and, and integrity. And this is, of course, it refers to all animals, whether it be domesticated animals, farm animals, wild animals. Absolutely. Insects. Absolutely. I, I, and I have a section in Nature Ethics where I, I look at the wild animal story the, in the, at the turn of the century, and um, Theodore Roosevelt and John Burroughs were irate about this because they were telling these wild animal stories um, 
were stories that were told about animals from their perspective. So it really brought the animals to life as individual beings. And they were concerned that this was going to in interfere with scientific experimentation and hunting and all those activities that they felt were, were extremely important, ex especially for young boys. And there was some validity to that because people reading those stories did develop empathy. So I think people like that were on to something that some of, some of us have forgotten today, but I think we need more stories like that. So things perpetuate, obviously, that are quite cruel and inhumane on various levels, globally. Yeah. Um, so I'm hearing your suggestion would be to educate at a young age and to disseminate some maybe more uh, stories that more that revalue our our ethical nature because aren't Absolutely. isn't ethics part of our nature yeah I, I i i use the word ethics in the sense of ethos or way of life and i think that we we do need to look at our worldview and the way of life that's based on that worldview and and question it. I think uh, a lot of what my work is about is teaching people to ask more questions and to ask them of themselves um, and to engage in dialogue. So I think we're all, so often on this automatic pilot so people are engaged in abusive activities and not realizing it and um, or just doing things unthinkingly. People eat meat and don't think about the suffering that is involved in bringing those animal products to their plate. So I think the, you know, so often those of us who are, I'm, I'm a vegan, and those of us who are vegan are used to de defending ourselves. Well, why are you a vegan? And, you know, I'll talk about the suffering of animals and and how I don't want to participate in that. I see it as an act of civil disobedience. I'm trying to disengage from that. But I also like to turn the tables, and, and not in a, in a hostile way, but to really ask people to question, well, why do you eat meat? Have you thought about that? Um, I think we really do need to start some dialogues. And, and when you hear people's answers, you know, there's often very little to substance to them. Well, you know, you know, I like the taste of it. You know, that's or you know, often people try to think of something else, and or, you know, animals aren't that intelligent. You know, we have reason. Well, you know, you know, human infants don't haven't don't have a developed rationality. We don't say that somehow intelligence has something to do with the, the our right to 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 take their lives. You know, so. For me, it comes down to we can we know we can live and live well without, you know, abusing other animals, without eating them, or their products. So why would we want to participate in that? Great. Thank you.